Uh, but for now, let's let me let me back up real quick and just read what I read last week, just to kind of launch us segue into this uh, current teaching. Uh, De- Pastor David Guzik concludes. He says. Jesus came to introduce something new, not to patch up something old. Again, notice he's launching from the part of the parable that talks about the old patch and new patch, sewing a a patch, I'm sorry, old, old, a new patch, old cloth, sewing a patch onto a new cloth. And of course, in Jesus' example, we can see from common sense that there's going to be some problems. All of these examples are taken from everyday common sense examples that people in that day would have readily and easily understood. Um... But is it necessary to read the passages that way? I think there's some grammatical clues that it's not. Can kind of, in my understanding, if we read the passage at face value, and I will read all three um, sections. I'm sorry, all three of versions, the gospel versions, a um, little later on down in my commentary, just before we finally read a better, uh, my own pe- perspective. I will look at all the other um, sections and see if there's something, any wording there that might hint as to maybe really Jesus is replacing, right? Um, old with new, something like that. But uh, Pastor David Guzik says that Jesus is introducing something new. This is what salvation is all about. In doing so, or doing this, Jesus doesn't destroy the old law. And I have to give David, uh, Pastor Guzik, uh, credit here because he says that Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. Of course, he can't say that Jesus came to destroy the law because Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 5, um, you know, four chapters earlier in the book that we're in now, right? We're in chapter 9 of Matthew. So if we back up five chap- four or five chapters, right, to chapter 5, so four chapters, then he says, I didn't come to do away with the law, and starting in verse 17, I came to fulfill it. Um, but, uh, and that's what the Pastor Guzik reminds us. Jesus doesn't destroy the old law, but he fulfills it. And he gives an example about an acorn fulfilling it, uh, being fulfilled when it grows into an oak tree. Um, but, he goes on to say that there is a sense uh, in this little example. There is a sense in which the acorn is gone, but the purpose is fulfill, fulfilled in greatness. Um, and so, even from his example, the acorn is destroyed because it is gone, right? I mean, if you were to dig up an, a- an acorn tree, I don't think the original acorn remnants, you know, any part of it is there. I don't think it's in the ground anywhere. I think it really does get destroyed in the process of growing into a tree. So, if we were to follow Pastor Guzik's analogy carried over into what Jesus did with the law, then essentially, yeah, the the, the remnants of law are gone. I mean, they they've been they played a purpose. They were disposable in that regard, right? They brought, they ushered in the new, and they allowed a a a place for the new to thrive and to flourish at first. And when we say new, of course, for Christians, this means either New Testament or New Covenant or Law of Christ or new people or something like that. New promises, uh, new expectations, uh, new um, requirements, new standards even, right? But um, again, my challenge is, does what Jesus brought to the table require the destruction of Judaism slash Jewish lifestyle or the Jewish mindset? You have to remember that Biblical Judaism was rooted in the commandments that God laid down at Sinai and the development of the Holocaust and the and the um the policies that had developed later on through the prophets in the time periods of the Old Testament of the Tanakh up till the time of Yeshua. And so when Yeshua hit the scene, we already had an established religion known as Judaism or Judaisms, right? Uh, owing for the different types of denominational expressions of Judaism. And yet, if a person wanted to accept Messiah, Jesus as the Messiah, and embrace his teachings, was it necessary, this is the challenge, was it necessary to throw out all of those old standards that one was already raised with as a Jewish person, as a religious Jew, or even a a common Jew? So, Really, we're asking the question, not really is Judaism and Christianity, are these two religions incompatible with one another, even though that's the name of the study. My challenge really is, is the Christian lifestyle and the Torah lifestyle incompatible with one another? Would Jesus endorse that question or that challenge? Of course, you guys have been listening to my commentaries and my teachings long enough to know that I answer in the negative. No, they are not incompatible with one another. It's not necessary to leave Judaism behind as a Jew if you want to embrace Jesus. And the proof is right in the scriptures. 
all of the first disciples, all of the first apostles, continue to live a Jewish lifestyle and follow after Messiah. Right? Paul's a good example, right? He didn't abandon Judaism, despite what you read in Galatians chapter 1. His former lifestyles, former manner of life in Judaism, things like that. We could talk about that on a different day. But the point I'm trying to um, bring up and make is that, according to the book of Acts, chapter 21, there were thousands of Jewish people, religious Jews, zealous Jews, and they were all zealous for the Torah. Right? They were believers in Jesus, and they were zealous for the Torah. This would be a problem if the current um, um, mindset fostered in Christianity, held in Christianity, that Judaism needs to go. If this is true, if Pastor would pass of the what these fine men of God that we've been reading about, if, if what they're saying is is you know uh, entirely the most accurate way to look at these things. So let's continue looking. 